It's Friday, September 9th. From inside the WTOP newsroom, this is the DMV Download, brought to you by the men and women of Steamfitters Local 602. Get an estimate and learn more at steamfitters-602.org. Today, we sit down with the Prince of Petworth himself, the founder of the popular community blog Popville, which, quote, chronicles the happenings in Washington, D.C.'s neighborhoods. We asked Dan Serverman where he gets his information and how he's posting every half hour. So 80 to 90 percent of the content is coming somehow from readers, whether it's general questions that they have or fun stuff like, you know, where's the best cappuccino? And Megan and I get into a little wordplay with our favorite picks of the more than 300 new words in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Thanks for joining us. I'm Megan Cloherty. And I'm Luke Garrett. The website Popville has been around for 15 years now, with the mission to chronicle real estate, restaurants, architecture, pets, transit, crime, and just about the general vibe of the nation's capital and its surrounding suburbs. It's true. In the 10 plus years I've been reporting in the D.C. area, Popville has been this living, breathing space for residents not only to kind of catch up on what's going on, but to air grievances, ask questions, and share local recommendations. And today we've got the man behind it all in the studio. Dan Silverman is here. Thank you so much for coming in. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, first off, I, I mean, I kind of hate to ask to start with like the obvious DC question. What do you do? <laughs> we know what you do, but we want to know how you do it. Um, is this like your your main thing? I mean, do you have another job? Do you have like a secret identity that we don't know about, or no. is it just Popville? <laughs> no secret identity. The site started in November uh, 2006, so it's coming on 16 years wow. in a couple months. Crazy. In September 2009. 2009, full-time. Wow. Oh, wow. So you did it for like three years, and then it took off I so did, well that... Yeah, I, wow. I did like two jobs. I had a regular job, mm. and then I did Popville. At that time, it was only known as Prince of Petworth at night. So it was pretty intense. And then I said... Let's just see. Yeah. And then Let's go it just, for it. yeah, it just rocketed from there. And so. take us back to that November of 2006. You know, what sparked that inspiration to start it all at the, in the first place? See, I don't know if people can appreciate it anymore because <laughs> 2006 in DC was a totally different world. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so I had moved to Petworth in 2003. And at that time, there was nobody. There was not like this super hyper local coverage. Every now and then you'd hear, I think this might be happening. I yeah. think that might be happening. And I was like, this is ridiculous. I want to know what's happening. And then I, I like found some free software. I was like, I'm just going to try it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> just on a whim. I was like, eh. I I'll, was bored I'll do and it. wanted it. Yeah. It truly was. That's awesome. I was bored. And it turned out a lot of people also wanted to know what the hell was happening. You know, there were a lot of, well, not a lot, but it was there were starting to be some new residents that also weren't that familiar. So it was nice to sort of explore D.C. together. Mm. Don't you think it was kind of during the time, too, Dan, you can say, no, Megan, you're completely wrong. But it feels to me like it was late 2000, uh, like 2005, that the neighborhood thing became such a big deal. Like, mm. I am from this neighborhood. <laughs> yes. And they would like, you know, it's like, oh, this is Noma. And we were like, what the hell is Noma at that point? And, or, you know, and DuPont was kind of less in and the wharf was all coming up. Mm. And like like people were starting to identify with like, I'm not just from Northwest. Right. I'm right. from Columbia Heights or whatever. And I think it speaking to the timing of the whole thing. It kind of played For into sure. that, right? I, I think among certain people that has always been an issue because there used to be a joke, you know, that they used to call Logan Circle uh, DuPont East. Because <laughs> nobody wanted to associate with Logan Circle at the time. And that's well before right. 2005. So there have been staunch neighborhood supporters. And people used to, and still do, massacre me. Hmm? If I call something, you know, Parkview instead of Petworth. And, and I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> this is Parkview. I've lived here for years. This is not Parkview. And then it turns out, I guess it is Parkview. So I bet so. you have this map where you're like color coding, like this is where they think this is, this neighborhood well, ends or whatever. It's funny, my, my parents, awesome people, got me a like a 1900 or some very, very early map. Oh, cool. cool. And it has Petworth. And I'm like, see, it's Petworth. <laughs> Proof. It's <laughs> been there. It didn't say Parkview. Uh, but I, I'm like a slow adapter. I had to be beat over the head 
in terms of those neighborhood boundaries. And now I'm like, okay. But my default is always, you live where you live. Where do you live? Yeah. Mm. You live in Logan Circle? Fine, you live in Logan Circle. You call it Logan I, like, Circle. I don't think yeah. it's my place to say, no, this is the name <laughs> of where you live. This is the name right. where you live. Right, and even just now, I mean, metro stations are being changed. The name is just this <laughs> week, you know, and people are up in arms about that I, as well. I did just a little one-off uh, post this morning about the five uh, name changes, and it was by far the most popular post of the day. That's so Boom. funny. Um, you're gonna ask about his ombudsman. Oh yes, yeah. Yeah. I love and this. So, <laughs> yes. I did a little search on you know the Popville about page, <laughs> and it's a self-described ombudsman of the D.C. region. Now, admittedly, I had to do a quick dictionary reference for myself to so freshen <laughs> up it. on the definition. And for all those who didn't know, it's a person who hears the grievances of individuals regarding like maladministration. Right, yeah. the government's not doing their thing, and an individual you know has a problem with it. And um, Popville is like the place where people voice those and then hear what can happen after that. Why is that important? I'm so glad you asked this question. <laughs> uh, when I started, I started the ombudsman as a joke. But it's incredibly important because the function has really become essentially like another at-large council member, like another avenue right. in which Anybody who lives in the city or works in the city, doesn't matter what ward they're in, it doesn't matter who their reps are, it's it's not in place of. They mm. they need to be contacting everybody. But for example, uh, this morning there was somebody asking about a nuisance property. In this case, the nuisance property is about uh, drug dealing and, and dogs off leash, et mm-hmm. cetera, et cetera. So they engage their council member, they engage their local government, they engage everybody who they engage, and guess what? It's still a nuisance property. Right. So when this happens, Popville has become this sort of uh, space where because it has grown to such a large audience, it is read by all the real powers that be. Mm. So when there is a situation, now it's not always fixed, you know, it's not a magic wand. Right, that it's right. Fixed. But it is amazing how many times um, troublesome issues do get addressed uh, after they send it in to me. I, I can't totally vouch for how important, you know, one grievance is more important than another. Right. But I try to choose the ones where I think change is possible. Mm. Um, because there's no point in just, you know, throwing something up there just to get people mad. Like, right. that's not my style. <laughs> right. yeah, some people think that is. Yeah, there, there was a time, <laughs> there was a time when people used to think that the success of a local website was based on comments. Stirring the pot. And they would say, oh, you're just doing that, you know, because mm-hmm. there's 100 comments. Most of the time, the most commented posts are far, uh, far away not the most popular. Mm. I feel like there was a few double negatives in there. But <laughs> we got the, it. <laughs> the, the, the many comments does not represent a popular post. Okay, so this— It means that there are a few passionate people, <laughs> and they're going back and forth <laughs> with each other. And, right, right, and, right, and right, then right. often, you know, stirring the pot among themselves, and then it seems like, wow. But in reality, no. Mm. So we've been talking about kind of you sifting through all of the information you get on social media, through your sites, through your email— how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a journalist, as an arbiter, as like a facilitator? You know, <laughs> what's the best word that we can kind of find? Yeah, a mix. Um, <laughs> I, you know, in, in the beginning, people used to uh, criticize me because, like, I didn't have standard journalist practices, you know, where, like, if somebody sent me a picture of a, of a bullet hole, mm-hmm. I would say, look, there was a shooting, this car has a bullet hole. But they say, you know, why didn't you get the comment mm. from the police? Why didn't you do this? I said, look, you know, I'm not, I'm not a standard uh, right. journalist website. What I do is I share what people are talking about. And, you know, if it turns out that that bullet hole was a week old and somebody says, hey, here's a picture from a week ago, that bullet hole, I say, my bad, this, right. is, this is a week old. Um, <laughs> what I do, it, it has a lot of elements of journalism, but it, you know, it's a, I think pretty much what you said, it's like a, a facilitator of conversation. Mm. <laughs> if I had to come up with a, <laughs> right. with a goofy title, at the end of the day, uh, that's what it is, because I am going through 
tons of information. Like how tons much? And tons. Oh my God. Like, I, you know, hundreds, hundreds of emails and messages every day. I mean, I think it's interesting too. You're, you're talking about the evolution of this thing. It started as a Petworth blog. It started right. as a neighborhood blog and it really has become a DC wide, if not kind of DMV, because every once in a while, a you know, bit, it yeah. melds a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. You know, Montgomery County, Arlington, I mean, those places exist and they totally. impact DC. Um, how do you get your content? I mean, because I know you have recurring things like the the rental of the day, um, yeah. pet stuff. Mm -hmm. um, pet of the day. Pet of the day. Um, daily. A, a daily pet stuff. <laughs> your afternoon animal fix. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to be technical. Yeah. But tell me, I mean, so you have some like standbys, but is the majority of your content generated by your, you know, the people who interact with the site? So here's the evolution of that. Yeah. Originally, I walked everywhere. And I would do five plus miles every day. And then on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, I would do 10 to 20 miles. This, this had is, nothing to do with the, this is just what you did. I mean, I've always been, I've always enjoyed walking. Okay. Like that's something that I enjoy. Mm. I didn't always walk that much. But once I started the site and it became popular, I branched out from Petworth very quickly. I mean, within months. So it was not a Petworth specific blog for very long at all. Mm. Why? Because, you know, I was young 30s and I was going out all the time. So where was I going out? I wasn't going out in Petworth. At the time, there was not a lot of places to go out in right. Petworth. The Red Derby so had been done, right? There was no Red Derby in <laughs> 2003. Uh, uh, Wonderland was the first big, oh, yeah. uh, exciting opening. And uh, Columbia Heights Coffee, which no longer exists. But th those were like, you know, the place just like, holy cow, wow, <laughs> this is this happening. But uh, I would walk to Columbia Heights because that's where there was action. I would walk to U Street because that's where things were going on. That's mm. where you could hang out. And so it was a very natural uh, expansion of the coverage. Now, fast forward get married, have children, uh, have... Life changes you know, a bit. You, you got a school drop-offs right. and <laughs> totally. curricular soccer practice. Right. Uh, I cannot, which it pains me because I truly love walking, but I cannot do it anymore. Mm. So what the compromise is that I get about four hours every either Saturday or Sunday. And in that four hours, I'll do about 12 miles. Wow. Um, wow. And that 12 miles effectively translates into about 10 to 20 percent of the content. Mm. So 80 to 90 percent of the content is coming somehow from readers, whether it's general questions that they have or fun stuff like, you know, where's the best cappuccino? Hey. Uh, you know, I, I see that. And I, you know, I see, I, when I walk around, like, I, it's like, just like, I'm kind of this goofy guy, like, look at that flower, <laughs> look at the stained glass, you know, look at the city, like, they're super interesting to me, but to the masses, it's not necessarily <laughs> as interesting. So I try to do a balance. Like, there's this recurring uh, section that I have that's called archaeological funds. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good one. Nobody likes it. I like it. That's so <laughs> yeah, funny thank you for that. liking I it. Do like page like counts, it. you mean? Like yeah, like it is not a very heavily viewed part of the site, but I love it. So whenever anybody sends me something, I'm like, I'm definitely posting that. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> so, I, so what I do first. is I do a, a combination yeah. of, because the site has always been driven by what I'm interested in. Here's the hard part. The hard part in 2022 is this balance and mix that I have going on. For example, you're not going to post about everything in Petworth. You're not even going to post about everything in Northwest. <laughs> you're not going to post everything about You couldn't. Crime. How could you possibly? You're not going to post yeah. anything about real estate. You're not going to post everything about development. You're not yada, yada, yada. Point being, you have to have this mix. And this mix is in my head. And so <laughs> every day I'm like, wait, what did I do then? What did I do there? You know, because I have a post about every 30 minutes. And so I'm always wow. mixing up from what I think I'm going to do. And then how does that change from either a breaking news or something that's sent to me that could be just like a really cool hawk. I'm like, well, I got to get that <laughs> hawk up. 
uh, you know, we'll, we'll push the uh, ice cream post back. And, you know, that that's every day. Because people are like, when I first started, people were like, oh, this must be great. You sleep in, you walk right. around all day. It's and, actually uh, pretty demanding. You know, like, it is intense. Well, intense. and you're running social media at the same time, which anybody who's tried to, I mean, with this podcast, we've right. learned it very um, intimately. That it's just, it's really hard to, like, put those together, have them be relevant. So how did you kind of tackle that? How have you decided to handle social media? Well, I, I always enjoy when people message me or email me, uh, can you please have somebody from your team do this? <laughs> can you have somebody from That's like us. It's I just know. the two of us. It's yeah, just you. That's, yeah. That's a lot. There is no team. <laughs> so everything that I do uh, has evolved organically. Like, I don't, this was not founded with a business plan and, a, and an <laughs> yeah. idea and this, that. It's just trial and error. And so what happened was, for some reason, Twitter always resonated the most with me. Hmm. And so I've always spent the most time on the Twitter angle. And that's kind of representative based on, I have a very large following for DC, a very large following yeah. on Twitter. Mm -hmm. On Facebook, not as much. And then very late, 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 I mean, like three years ago, I started doing Instagram. And it's interesting. Instagram is kind of nice because it's more positive. It feels more positive. So over the past few years, I mean, you've seen so many stories that have filtered through your site. Are there any stories? Is there a story that really sticks with you that are that stuck with you over the years? You know, my ability to retain has vanished. The kind of that mix in your brain is always working that once it's out there, you're it's like, so okay, hard now, to, yeah. now I don't have Reset. to worry about that. It's yeah. so hard but to remember. Here, but here's what I can tell you in, in, a, in a sappy answer. <laughs> uh, the fundraising that has been accomplished on the site is astonishing. And I never like to... Uh, uh, boast about that on the site because it just seems, mm -hmm. you know, what's, what's the point? You're just patting yourself on the back. But I'll tell it here because it is what I remember, you know, for years. And I can remember specific, you know, this person's stove broke or mm. now it's a lot of immigrants and before it was Afghanistan and mm -hmm. now. And thousands and thousands over the years, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars wow. have been raised. I mean, that's many years, but yeah, have still. been raised from the Popville community. Mm. And that is astonishing. Because you can see how your role is making a difference in people's I just lives. See, I, yeah. I mean, I, I put it up there, and then I see the GoFundMe at the end of the day, and I'm like, holy cow. Right. Yeah. But in this message that I'm giving you, truly, I do not give that credit to myself. I give that credit to the community and I, and the admiration that I have for the community is just uh, massive. Um, so, yeah, that's my sappy answer. Boom. This conversation has been so good. We actually are going to make a bonus episode for you guys. So check that out. We're going to be dropping that this weekend. Dan Silverman, the walking, <laughs> the walking ombudsman. I'm, I'm Budsman. Ombudsman, the walking <laughs> ombudsman of Popville. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And after the break, do you like oat milk with your pumpkin spice latte while you're dodging subvariants? Mm. Some of those words and many more are now officially part of the English language. We'll talk about it. Backed by the experience of its hardworking members, Steamfitters Local 602 is ready to take on your next commercial heating, cooling, HVAC, or refrigeration project. Steamfitters Local 602 adds value to our community through its partnerships with local contractors and building owners, all while keeping the focus on improving the lives of its members and their families throughout the DMV. For work that's on time and on budget, go to steamfitters-602.org to schedule your next project. That's steamfitters-602.org. Steamfitters Local 602, changing lives. Thanks for listening to the DMV Download. If you like this show, give us five stars and leave us a review on Apple Podcast. We love hearing from you guys, and your reviews really do help other listeners find this, our area's only in-depth daily local news podcast. And thank you for making us a part of your day. Okay, so before we go, there are some new words in the English language officially. In the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. 370 words. That's a lot. 
It is a lot. And they haven't done it since um, March of 2020, which also indicates the kind of words you're going to hear that are added <laughs> because we all know what happened in March of 2020. Yes. Um, so we're going to pick our three favorite out of the the bunch that we saw. I don't think I didn't go through all 370. Did I you? did not either. I did okay. a quick scan, but there were some clear winners for okay. me at least. <laughs> all right. Okay. I'm interested. Um, okay. So, so the ones that I think are not surprising that are added, just to throw them out there. Mm-hmm. Lay the groundwork. S- subvariant. Yes. Side hustle. Yes. Which also is a COVID thing. False negative, false positive. Oh, God. And booster I'm dose. Anxious. <laughs> booster dose. Which, I mean, I, it's funny because a lot of times these words, you feel like they were words before. I guess it's maybe just the combination of the phrase or, right. or creation now, of like, the phrase. Right, and they're now codified. You know, yeah. Or, yeah, anyway. It's kind of risen to that level. Um. Okay, so let's go to our three, and then I might have some... A few words that I just can't Some stand. choice words. Some choice words are for some choice words. <laughs> yes. All right. So what tops my list of the top three and is probably my favorite word in general is yeet. 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 Y-E-E-T. Just like it is what it sounds like. How come you I've only heard saying? that word going yeet? Like it's like hi. Oh, it's like hi. So it's, it's, an, it's two things. It's an interjection. So it's like, yes, let's go. Like, boom. Yeet. Okay. Okay. Like something happens, you're excited. It's like a you know joyful, let's go kind of deal. Okay, it almost then, sounds like a word that just like comes out of a baby, like when they're right. excited. No, it is kind of like granular and like almost like maybe the cavemen, you know, said it like way back <laughs> when. You know, it's that's why I love us this it. Long. It like totally gets down to your like you know. All right. Roots. Okay. And then yeet is also a verb. Do you want to guess what the verb yeet means? To. No, I don't know. <laughs> So it means like to throw. So like to so, throw. Yeah. So like Juan Soto in the outfield, he yeeted that ball like right to home Come plate. Come on. That's... Oh yeah. Yeet. Like, no. You know, think about it. Like a frisbee. Like, Wait a minute. Is this according to the Merriam-Webster dictionary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yep, my yep, gosh. Yep, yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's topping my list because it's just fantastic. Just such a fun word. Second, terraform. Ooh. It's a verb and it means to transform a planet or a moon into a hospitable place. And the reason I like that word is because that's not necessarily a possibility, but it's out there. Like, I guess it is a possibility. No, I mean, Elon Musk is really trying to do that with Mars. And, you know, there's kind of a timeline for people trying to do this. So it I makes guess, me think of terrarium. Yeah. yeah. Terraform. I mean, terra, land. Yeah, that's cool. It. Yeah, Very so cool. it kind of makes sense, and it's kind of a sign of the times. Okay. Third. The third is a little bit obnoxious. Um, <laughs> and I say that because... <laughs> And because I that. this new word is my name. Not spelled the same way. Luke. L-E-W-K. I had no idea what this word was. All I knew is that was pronounced like my name, Luke. So what it is, is it's slang for a fashion look that is distinctive to the wearer and is notable and memorable. So if I had a look, or like sorry. your DMV I, download t-shirt you're wearing right now. Right. Yes. I'm repping. So <laughs> this is a Luke. So this is Luke's Luke. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So that just use that when oh, you have a new look. Okay. I like your words, and I'm glad they're not the same as mine, so we have more content. So Boom. my first word is sessionable. What does that mean? It means it has to do with alcohol. <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't start there. Now I want to go back. Sorry. Sessionable, <laughs> it is having light body and lower than average percentage alcohol. Oh. It's sessionable. It's sessionable. Like, uh, there's like a Spanish white wine that's like really sessionable. sessionable yeah. Um, okay. I don't, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, but I think it's omakase. Omakase. O M A K A S E. Okay. A noun. And it means a series of small courses offered at a fixed price whose selection is up to the chef's discretion. Oh. So if you're going to have a dinner party, you put out a bunch of like, like tapas or sushi or something small. I guess it doesn't really work there because you're not charging your guests at uh, a dinner the set party. price is free, so <laughs> that still works. But yeah, so it's sort of like a chef's tasting, I suppose. Cool. But omakase. Omakase. And nice. then the last one I like is janky because I feel like I've been using that for a long time. Yeah. And it's like, that, that's what yeet is like to me. It's like, I've been using it. This is kind of like supportive. You know? Yeah. Janky. It, it's an informal use of, an, I guess it's a noun. That's janky. No, it's an adjective. It's an adjective. Boom. And it means like poor quality or broken or just yeah. kind of not not up to kinda par. Kind of sounds like how it is. Janky, like chunk chunk chunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. So the other words that I don't like that were added, <laughs> Okay. just to throw this in yeah, there. Yeah, you just got to throw some shade. Oat milk. Like, does that need to be in the dictionary? Dude, I P- love oat milk. Pumpkin spice. I'm surprised that wasn't in the dictionary. Mm-hmm. Galentine's Day. 
heavy <laughs> eye roll. I mean, listen, I've taken part in a Galentine's Day or two. I, I love the idea. Doesn't but, mean you have to put it right, in Miriam Webster. Thank you, yes. <laughs> and SpawnCon, which is funny. What does that mean? We all know what it means, but it's... I don't. I know, I know. But okay, so it's sponsored content. Oh, God. So any... It's, it. And it says in there, like, from Instagram, like, from influencers, essentially. Oh, man. Capitalism has really... Ugh. Then it's part on the English language. Um, and it's funny because all languages change and evolve, right? I mean, even if you don't like a word being added, it yep. kind of speaks to where we are. Um, but it made me think of France because the Académie Française is the one, is like the their governing body over language. Okay. And they're very, very, very strict. Oh, wow. As to what gets let in. I had no idea. Yeah. It's it's like one of the, they try and keep it like the purest language, the purest form of the language. Ooh. But even there, they have let some words in, which segues right into you going to France. Yes. To, yes. Tonight. Yeah. I'm flying out red eye tonight. It's happening. It's happening. I'm going there. Thankfully, I have learned my skill of driving stick shift manual transmission, so I won't be stranded in Normandy, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> Um, put a and lot thank of... you to all those people who wrote in and helped us. There <laughs> were a couple people there who came were. up. Yeah, they're like kind of concerned, like Luke, like I don't know, you know, you got to learn this. Yeah. So that's done. Cool. Um, haven't mastered the whole French language thing yet, but I'm getting there. And he got a convertible. He upgraded to a convertible. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. It just happened. I got an email. Like, I love Upgrade, it. and I was like, convertible. That sounds. That sounds. That sounds all right. Well, I hope you have an amazing trip. Yes. No, I'll be gone for a week. So. Yeah, Maybe there, you there can you share some some posts on our thing. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'll so be people can see where you are all day on our thing, meaning our social media. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Count on it. Cool. And that'll do it for us for the DMV download this week. We are sponsored by Steamfitters Local 602. Our managing editor is Craig Schwab and our music is by Real World. Give us a review and rate our show if you get the chance. Hit that subscribe button if you get the chance to because, you know, you never want to miss an episode. And you can follow us on social media where we're posting content every day. You can find out more about this show and become one of our VIP listeners at dmvdownload.com. Some of that content hopefully from France. Yeah. yeah. Au revoir. <laughs> oui, oui. <laughs> The DMV Download is a product of WTOP News. Listen on 103.5 FM in D.C., 107.7 FM in Virginia, 103.9 FM in Frederick, Maryland, online at WTOP.com and on the WTOP News app. Have a good weekend, guys. See you in a week.